that's why like i always use tracers so like i know what i'm shooting at and if i did hit you i'm like look dude i shot you because i can yeah. see it physically welcome man i met you through um oh uh, bondo oh, yeah. yeah man i appreciate Love you being on oh of course um because i saw the um episode with bondo and i'm like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> i'm like no fucking way i'm like shit oh man yeah this is uh so him and i have followed each other on instagram for a while i don't know how i missed having him on here like a long time ago i don't know but um it was uh last week sometime russell customs posted a video with um you know, him and, and Bondo on there uh, trying out a, a new gun. And I was like, oh, dude, I should have you on a podcast sometime. And he's like, I'll do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's go. So, hell yeah. Yeah. Man. I mean, I mean, I was even telling Matt, I'm like, dude, that gun is thick. I mean, I'm actually going to hit up Russell. I'm not sure yeah. when, but to get my gun upgraded and everything, I'm like, for speed QB or just in game in general, I mean, right. his guns are amazing. Well, introduce yourself real quick and uh, tell people your uh, Instagram, and then we'll oh. uh, we'll go into your airsoft experience. Oh, for sure. My name is Isaac, or I go by the Killing Airsoft, or what people just call me, just Killing. Um, I've been playing airsoft for like four or five years. Um, I've been on Bondo for at least a year now, and I play speed QB for Bondo Houston, all the way in Texas. And honestly, that's about it, really. Nice. Okay, so did you grow up in Texas? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so, uh, I, mean, I remember when I talked with um, Russell Customs. I talked to him, and he's like, yeah, I said, are you from Texas? He's like, no, I'm from Alaska. And I said, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, because uh, he started talking about how hot it was in Texas, and how unbearable. And I was like, well, something like, aren't you used to it or something? And he's like, no, man, I grew up in Alaska. And I said, well, he was like, you know, I came here and thinking it wasn't going to be that, that much, you know, obviously it'd be hot, but not like this. He's like, dude, this is crazy hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Texas, it's very bipolar with their heat. I mean, it's crazy. That's funny. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I just, it is hot here. It sucks. Yeah. Now you got uh, you grew up in the Houston area, you said. Yeah. Nice. For okay. seventeen years, so. Oh yeah. Awesome. And then, what did you? Uh, so, what were you doing before airsoft? Did you have any hobbies or anything? Just not. I mean, I was a big fan of paintball. I never got into it, but yeah. I used to play like beginner paintball with my uncle and everything like that. Um. Nothing to, nothing really. It just I really got into paintball. Then I saw some airsoft videos from like, um, Novrich and everything like that. Then after that, I got to like more and more to speedsoft. Then after that, I'm like, then I saw a thing about like, oh, you guys should do this tournamently. So I got into like speed QB and everything. Then Bondo hit me up, um, beginning of last year actually during like beginning of August, and I'm like, well, no, I should be like. 2020 like two i think okay or something like that and i'm like i know it's already 2024 bro i can't believe it it's, it is crazy <laughs> it's, it's actually I wild i'm like <laughs> yeah this uh but, so now explain your first ever airsoft game how, how did that go um was Man, it fun? Were you were you a rental? Did you? Yeah, uh, oh yeah. You were a rental. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got like the cheap rental mask, the cheap vest. Um, I used to play, I play at High Ground or Evike uh, oh, when yeah. they used to be over at Spring, and so with that, I used to play like like the speed softers, kind of like ruin my day a little bit, like with like Polish stars, then like the mag dumping. Oh, it sucked at first, but like, all my friends like come on it's not that bad it's not like that every day and i'm like i don't know 
I mean, I got I was scared for a little bit of playing airsoft, then like I got used to it after a while because like it used to hurt like real bad. Yeah, but uh, it was okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I mean, now what did you what did you wear your first time? Did you wear like baggy uh, sweatshirt or something like that? A sweatshirt and I, like, I think like joggers and like some Vans. Okay. And that's about it. And yeah. just it was not it. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, one guy, this one guy I was talking to, this is a while ago. I was talking about, oh, who was I talking to? We were talking about um, uh, one of the guys that worked at Nashville Airsoft in out of Tennessee, and he goes, uh, he was like, you know, one of the issues they have is these young players that come on there. You know, it's an indoor field, and he's like, a lot of these new guys, they're young, they're like, you know, thirteen, fourteen, whatever, and they're not. You know, they don't, they don't know what to expect with airsoft. So they wear like a baggy sweatshirt. And the problem is they can't really feel their hits too much, you know, especially if it hits it in a baggy part. So um, yeah. I was like, dude, you ought to make them wear like a T-shirt and that's it. Like their <laughs> first time they have to wear a T-shirt so they learn to call their hits. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, because yeah. I was talking to Bondo and one of the things that, you know, of course, you know uh, him. So he – he came over from paintball, you know, that was his, his past. And, um, I w he was like, you know, I was really against airsoft because, uh, we were just, you know, talking mad shit about airsoft when, uh, we were in paintball. And I was like, what, yeah, what is it? What is it about paintballers that talk? Uh, you know, what's the main thing they make fun of for airsoft? Cause I know what it was. Cause I was a paintballer back in the nineties. And, um, and he, I said, is it the call your, don't call your hit thing? And he's like, yep. And I said, I know. Because that was the first thing I thought of after being in paintball. And when my boys start playing uh, airsoft, I'm like, well, how is somebody even going to know they got hit? Like, they I could just not call it. it. Yeah, you can't see it. It doesn't splatter. You don't, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, that's the thing. That's why, like, I always use tracers. So, like, I know what I'm shooting at. And if I did hit you, I'm like, look, dude, I shot you. Because I can yeah. see it physically. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, actually, tracers are like, it changed a lot of perspective in airsoft because with paintball, like, oh, we can't just tell the ref, like, hey, paint check them. No. Like, that's why I use a GoPro, then, like, also with a tracer unit because if someone cheats, I'm like, look, I have proof of hitting you with my GoPro and my mm -hmm. tracers sees where like, I, I shoot at. I'm like, you're over with. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever shot somebody? <laughs> And they actually, like, they flinch, and then they still don't call it? Oh, yeah. It's Isn't that terrible? Me off all the, like, bro, you flinched. You flinched. Oh, Even my. if I didn't hit you, you flinched. <laughs> you should be out for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I shoot him a few more times. He's like, what the hell? You overshot me. I'm like, call your hits the first time, dude. Dude. <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't understand what is so hard. Like. I got when I uh, I went to um, an indoor field with these guys and I was just filming, okay? Yeah. And so I had a GoPro on like a little arm or whatever, little stick, like selfie stick mm -hmm. almost. And what they did was at the field, um, they let me use the riot shield. So it was a clear plexiglass, you know, big riot huh. shield. And so I walked around with that and I held my camera out. And um, somebody accidentally shot me in the back. Cause I was like literally walking through the middle of the field while they're in a firefight, you know, like they're peeking corners. And so they just saw somebody and they shot, it was no big deal. But I mean, it hit me in a lower back on the side where it's real tender. And yeah. I mean, I flinched like my, my arm almost went up just, just out of, you know, reaction. And I'm thinking, why don't these guys, I don't see how they can not call it when they flinch. And then they, like your arm right. automatically wants to go up. Exactly. I mean, I have no clue how. They're purposely I mean, doing it. <laughs> I always call my hits. I'm like, I just like, I don't like pain. It sucks. I mean, getting shot multiple times in the back. I can't do it. Oh, that hurts, bro. Oh, yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> yep. No kidding. Yeah, paintball I don't know how people was, uh, Yeah, same way. Like, like, you don't want to keep getting shot. Oh, my God. Speaking of that, I just saw this video from HK Army. You know, I follow mm -hmm. them on Instagram. They had, they uh, posted this video. I don't know if it was yesterday. I just saw it yesterday. And it was 
I'm not sure what game type this is or what if it's just for like fun or something they do, but there's this like um there's this thing on a stick in at the top of this hill. Mm-hmm. And it's got like a almost like a four pronged windmill little thing, like a little plastic thing that yeah. spins and it's different colors. And um they have to run up and hit it, like make it spin. Well, there's one guy running. And every, you see a million paintballs from all different sides just hitting the crap out of them. And uh, I'm just like, mm-hmm. and they're showing it in slow motion. I'm just like, dude, it is, no. it's crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> You're going to do it. You're going to do it. I, I would can't. actually like to find this video and show it because uh, it is so, I would love to know anyone that um, is in paintball, anyone that knows it. Uh, hit me up on here and on this video, leave a comment on it because I want to see what this game type is, or maybe it's just a, like a test, you know, like a, like a rite of passage or a something like that, you know? Yeah. That they initiation do. maybe, who knows? Yeah. Initiation, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I ran, I ran a gauntlet one time for my birthday, man, that hurt. So I came back on my whole back full of bridges. Well, um, what'd you guys so- do? Oh, full auto. Like, I had to run across the whole field. It was an outdoor field. And everyone had to turn on full auto and just shoot me, like, as much as they can before I get to the other side. So oh, we have shit. people with polar star jags, polar stars, you know, just crazy. Yeah. Just like lasers. 70 rounds yeah, a second or yeah, whatever. Yeah, just lasers. I'm like, dude, like, the best day <laughs> but worst day of my life, bro. I just, oh, fuck. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, but you felt better afterwards. It was cool because oh. you, you know, it's uh, when you get some battle scars, man. It's it's awesome. Oh yeah, I mean, when I came home, my family was like, "What happened?" I'm like, "Birthday." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they do in the in the UK. I've talked to a bunch of people in the UK, and they do uh, if they go play on their birthday at the field, whatever field they're at, it's a rule that everyone gets to line up and shoot them in the back. And so they stand up there, you know, it's about 30, 40 feet away, bro. Now they only shoot them once. They don't unload on them, but still it's, um, you know, 30 people shooting you at once in the back, man. That's, that's rough. Yeah. I can't imagine that. Honestly, we did. Yeah, um... was... Oh, go ahead. I was always the single shot, not full auto. <laughs> yeah. Right. We did a, uh, we did something similar with um, uh, when we first started our channel. Well, maybe about a year into our channel. Like, I don't know. We were uh, doing giveaways and, you know, we were doing reviews and stuff. Uh, the first half of our channel, uh, the first couple years of our channel was um, mystery boxes and reviews on whatever we would get in those boxes and stuff. So, and there was more than just me on the channel. It was uh, my sons, two of my sons, and then their good friend, uh, JP. And uh, who I really miss being on here, uh, and I know a lot of people do. But um, so one time we did this giveaway thing. We got an RPG seven from a mystery box, and it was awesome, dude. Like it was real wood furniture. Like the thing was real heavy. It looked like it was really well made. Okay, it was one of the more expensive ones that you could get. And um, and what you do is put one of those. Uh, uh, like a 40 mic mic or whatever in it. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, shoot out the end. So anyway, one of the videos we did was, uh, we did a live stream. Well, we tried to do a live stream. It was real broken up. That was the problem. I should have actually just videoed it and posted it. But so it, it, cause it turned out kind of crappy cause it kept cutting out, but we shot JP in the back with this thing from like 30, 40 feet. Because we thought, okay, it's not going to be that. It doesn't shoot out that hard. You know, those grenades, they're, you know, they, they shoot like 100 BBs or whatever. Uh, but they're not going that fast. So we made him wear a bikini. <laughs> like a Speedo. Oh, my so God. He, what I did was, um, excuse me, at the time I was making like some of our merch, that I, T-shirts and stuff I was making. So I found this website that does like... Um, girls clothes you can add you know just like teespring so i did uh i made this bikini and put our logo on it and stuff 
and um, well, I had an extra bottom, okay, of one, and I made him wear it, and uh, you know, we were like, dude, you gotta wear it. He's like, okay, so he was a he was a real trooper for doing it, but um, we had a great time. But we shot him in the back, and oh my god, dude, this thing. They must have been going way faster than we thought because his back was riddled like a lot of welts. I mean, he went to, he went down to his knees. I actually posted a there. If you scroll way down our Instagram, there's a picture of him, of his back, and mm-hmm. it's it. You'll probably cringe when you see it because you'll be like, "Okay, I know what that feels like." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, dude. Oh my god! Is that the worst Ouch. place you've been shot? uh that or like the fingers actually oh shit. Uh, one time actually i was at awaken airsoft in san antonio and we were doing like some practice and i got shot like right here in the middle of the knuckle and i just swollen up i'm like oh, yeah. it hurt so bad i'm like no i'm I'm done for it right now <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I couldn't do it just ow sucked i was playing in center and peeking, I was peeking over with my pistol and just got shot right here. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> now, do you wear gloves? Have you started wearing um, gloves? Yes, actually. I, w- I, did, I was wearing gloves, but like not padded. It was like okay. football gloves because it's like really like, sticky and everything. Oh, so yeah, I, I have good. a better grip. Uh-huh. But I'm like, I might switch to uh, mechanic gloves, honestly. I'm like, yep. I, th- I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, one of the guys, oh, I've talked to so many people that uh, said the same thing with getting shot in the fingers and the knuckles. And okay. um, one of the guys I was talking with uh, last year, his uh, he actually showed it on camera, his uh, index finger on the fi- right in the middle of the fingernail had that big black dot on it from getting shot there. Oh, dude, those hurt so bad. Those yes. hurt so bad. I don't know what kind of pain that is, but it's a really annoying pain. It is. I mean, it, it hurts, but like after a while, it, like the pain stops. But until you go to pick something up and like squeeze your finger with it or something. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I had this for like three months now, and it's still there. Right. Okay. So that must have got. You must have got hit right at the base. Right where your, yeah, where your skin meets the nail, yeah, because it takes yeah. a while for it to come out. Yep. Man, when I first saw it, when I first got shot, ooh, dropped my gun. I'm like, uh-huh. fuck, and I dropped it, but I'm like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shit, bro. So you you start playing at uh, did was your first field um, the high grounds? Is that where you start yeah. playing? Yeah, I started playing there then. Just exploring my different options, but high grounds is mainly my main field I play it. Yeah, is that that's where you started out? Now, how did you get? Um, how did you say you got on? Uh, got on with Bondo? Like you were? Did, um, did you start airsoft by yourself and just, or did a friend take you? Started by myself because I saw like Novridge. I'm like, I'm curious right. if there's like any like airsoft fields around. So I looked up airsoft, and there was like one near me. I'm like, oh, okay, I go there. Started in. That's how it really happened then. Um, it was my mom's friend's birthday one time. And so we went to Austin, and that's where Bond was at. And I was I was a little bit more better then. Like, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't so much a rental. Uh, I was more like a speed softer. I guess you say like an edgy speed softer. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was a big fan of speed QB. So okay. I was just playing. I met Bond for the first time because, um, like, he was a ref at uh, Texas Paintball, but he's not anymore. But... He was a ref. I was playing a little bit. Then I know, like, I always like talk to my mom. I'm like, I want to be on Bondo. I'm like, because like I thought he was like the shit at the time. I saw him and his team. I'm like, I want those jerseys. And then like, a few months later, Bondo texts me. He's like, Hey, I saw you out the field. I really like what you did. I'm like, Hey, what, like, how would you like to join Bondo? I'm like, No way. <laughs> it's just like a dream come true. And I'm like. Are you serious? He's like, yeah. He texts JJ. He's the uh, manager of Bondo Houston. I'm like, sweet. Yeah. It's amazing. And then after that, Bondo has been a big family. Nice. Yeah, and you're sporting the uh, the jersey now. 
Yeah, it's good. Uh, the, OG, the OG um Bondo Houston jersey. But we're getting a new one here soon. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Can't wait to rep it. Now how many of you guys do you have on your team now? Where you're at? Team I wanna say like maybe like eight. I believe I could be wrong, but around like eight. Are you uh and who's the newest are you one of the newer players or no, I'm actually one of the uh, original players. But okay. the newer player, he's one of my buddies actually. Um he's like, Yo, I fuck with the jersey, where can I get one? I'm like, Oh Bondo He's like, Really? He's like, Let me i like, let me show you some of that shit. He's like, Bro, you gotta let me go on there. I'm like, All right <laughs> Then he's pretty good at airsoft too. He's more like a speed softer, but he wants to get to speed Q B. His name is Tyler. And I'm like me and Tyler have been friends for like two years now, and I'm like, bro, gave him a patch, and he's like, bro, you got you to gotta teach me the ways of the Bondo. I'm like, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> you the way. Right. So, That's cool. I mean, newest, but it's going to be awesome, honestly. I mean. Yeah, you guys time. got a lot of stuff coming up this year. Yeah, actually, we do. Um we have something in uh, it's actually March 9th, honestly, actually in San Antonio. Okay. Can't say much about it because my manager says don't talk too much about it, but just say that we're going to some place. Nice. And, we're gonna, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think Bondo mentioned, he didn't say what it was, but he mentioned uh, something like that. And it was like, you know, I, I'm going to have him back on. After what we should do is a team one where you know you and him and maybe one of the, one of the other teammates after that mm. event come back on and talk about it. It'd be cool. Oh yeah, that'd be sweet actually. I mean, I would yeah. love to. I would love to. It's always fun uh, talking about an event, you know, after you get back. Cause like, there's been a few of these podcasts. I didn't. They weren't like this style where I was interviewing somebody. It was more of a just the audio that I posted mm. early, early on when I first started the podcast. It was. Uh, airsoft stories i called it and what it was yeah. was when when uh, i went to a mill sim with these guys and um just to film and take pictures and on the way back you know there's a whole truck full of us you know there's like four of us five of us and we're all just talking about it i just turned my phone on record the audio part and i stuck it up on here and it's one of the it's one of my favorite ones because you know after an event man you're everyone's excited uh everyone's telling about all these different, you know, has all these stories about what happened and where they were and where somebody else was. And, you know, and, I mean, it was a really cool thing. And, you know, you talk for like an hour, hour and a half about everything. And then everyone gets quiet because everyone's tired as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. I mean, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yeah. That'd be cool, man. Have you guys on after that? Actually. Yeah. I mean, I played, it wasn't a Millstone, but it was a big event uh, in Tanks, like somewhere in Houston, I believe. But it was a Christmas. It was uh, like Grinch versus something, I forgot. But it was like a long ass uh, event, but I had mm. an amazing time there. That's cool. Now, have, mm. you, ever, have you ever played like um, Millsim type or you know, bigger events type of thing besides, like, indoor? No, actually. Um, I want to try, but I, like, don't know exactly where to go for a Millsum. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I would love to to go to a Millsum, but I have no clue where to go, honestly. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, you know, you'd have to fit it in between your schedule of what you guys are playing, and then uh, it's – if you go to a three-day Millsum, it's kind of a big commitment. Um because you got to get all your gear, and uh, you got somebody coming. What do you got? A sibling? Yeah, family. No, yeah. it's my family coming in. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's cool, man. This yeah, ain't professional. This ain't professional. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. When you, um, it's kind of a big commitment to go to a full weekend mill sim because you know most of them you have to have the right kind of gear. Uh, yeah. Like certain camo or something like that and then the tickets usually like you know 150 200 bucks um and then you know you usually have to travel so it's a it's a big it's a way bigger commitment than just like an open play or something like that yeah i mean 
I don't mind spending that money just like I'm like because I know because I was listening to uh, the Bonda podcast not too long ago actually I heard like people are, like really strict about like what you wear and I'm like well that's Milson West yeah mm-hmm. yeah I'm like ooh like I love to go but I don't want to also like get like hated on for like having the wrong stuff on accident I'm like oh forgot this I'm like wait I'm wearing the wrong camo uh oh <laughs> uh, I know I know Bondo said uh man he went that was his first Milsim was Milsim West yeah. and um he was like but uh, you know I loved it that way but uh you know most people don't start out like that they go to uh ones that are way more laxed with that kind of thing so yeah. they're way more accommodating to players that you know are fairly new to uh, mill sims and stuff that's a majority of them majority of the uh, mill sim hosts and event holders are their rules are are way more lax than that um because they're trying to accommodate you know 700 people you know there were 700 people at uh, stonebreaker two years ago uh or was it last year did we go last year yeah 700 people last year and um and it's like that almost every year uh, and I think that's the one coming up in March, put on by Third Coast Airsoft. But um, I know that they have some events around you in Texas, like different mm-hmm. event holders, Lion Claws. And I think Third Coast actually does one in uh, Texas. But, yeah, the, the hard part would be figuring out a weekend to go around your schedule already. Um, yeah. Plus building up all the gear and equipment. So, yeah. Very just like just the hard part for me is getting probably getting the gear and like what exactly to get honestly you and bondo should go to a milson west event together he'll he'll take you under his wing and show show you what to do (laughs) that would be actually awesome that would be cool man i should hit him up i'm like yo take me to milson west (laughs) for real like dude i i listen to your podcast and uh you're talking about milson west i want to go he'd be like bet let's do it <laughs> oh yeah for sure because uh, no me and bono we're pretty cool and i'm like i should probably hit him up actually I'm yeah like, yo matt come on let's go yep <laughs> yeah you'd like it it's kind of cool to you know most of the people i've talked with have tried both you know yeah uh, at least one time or another so there's uh there's a lot of kind of experienced players you know they go and they try out and they like, you know what? I like uh, I like Speedsoft better. Or some of them tried Speedsoft and didn't like it. And they like Milsim better, you know? Yeah. So that was my boys. My two boys, they uh, they tried Speedsoft a couple times. And um, they they gravitated towards the Milsim stuff. So Yeah, mate. Yeah. yeah I'm a, I'm a, I love to do it because I'm a big military fan. Because I have a bunch of military in my family. I'm like, it's probably like awesome for me because i'm a little bit like a military dork right when it comes to certain stuff like this i mean like all my family like the marines or like army i'm like this okay. would be amazing for me so i mean i'm gonna like i want to try at least once to see what like it, it is a little bit well who do you have who's in your family do you have uh, siblings and uh that know you play airsoft Oh, my whole family knows I play airsoft. They think it's like, they think it's stupid a little bit. It's like, oh, they're just toy guns. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, hey, I was like, shoot, I shoot my friends, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who thinks it's stupid? You have a, what do you have, a brother? Uh, Two little sisters. Okay. They're like, okay. oh, it's fake. I'm like, come on. Oh, that's funny. Now, how about your dad? <laughs> What's he think of it? Oh, uh, he's not sure a little bit. I mean, he's like, he, he enjoys it because he's like, oh, he's like, you learn gun safety. I'm like, that's what you need to know, you know? I'm like, I mean, yeah, because he was in the army too. And he's okay. like, oh, it's amazing to like know your gun safety, know about guns. I'm like, so it's like 50-50 on my family. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's most people I talked with is uh, their family's like, like, oh, yeah, they play with those little toy things over there or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> this one girl I talked to in the UK, she said, uh, my parents were always making fun of it. So I shot him with my pistol, like in the butt. <laughs> I said, oh, no, no way. You shot your mom in the butt. She said, yeah, we were in the garden, uh, in the backyard. And, uh, they were making, you know, they, they kept saying stuff about it and they said, oh, it doesn't hurt. And so I shot her in the butt. She said, she let me, but, uh, it was a real eye opener for them. 
They, <laughs> they said, okay, it's serious. Yeah. My family's like, you shouldn't be hurting yourself. I'm like, I'm not hurting myself. I'm having fun. You know, right. I mean, like, looks like it hurts. I'm like, it does, but you can get over it. I mean, yeah, that's what I like different. about airsoft. I mean, it's going to hurt, but you're having fun and you just get over it. Because exactly. at, at the end of the day, it's just a game. Well, I got this uh, video. I found this video hmm. on um, HK Army. I want to show you. <clears throat> I'm going to share the screen, okay? So you ha are oh. you on your phone? Yeah. It, you might have to hit the screen to say uh, watch stream or something like that when it comes oh, up. But let fine. me, uh, dude. Oh my god, it's fucking crazy. Okay, let me, uh, <laughs> let me share. I'm serious, bro. I mean, I'm I'm cringing while I'm watching it right now <laughs> as it's playing. All right, let's see where's it at. There it is. I can't imagine it getting unloaded, dude. Hopefully it doesn't lag out. Here we go. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, watch. It's good. It'll start out. Well, here, let me just go back. All right, you ready? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna leave the sound off, but watch this. You won't need it. Ooh. <clears throat> It'll start out. Watch, watch. See this middle thing they're going for? Look at all these. I mean, it looks like a war zone, bro. Watch the slow I motion. Yeah. Look! 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 <laughs> And that dude, look at his head. The top of his head is uncovered. Oh, my God. I hate getting shot in the head so much. Look at all this splatter everywhere. Dude. You know how much that would hurt, bro? This has to hey, be I, an initiation of something. I cannot imagine that. Like, when I play CQB, when I play for practice and stuff like that, I play center or snake, but yeah. mainly center. So I, I do dolphin dive into the center, grab the flag, but... Someone okay. peeks the top and just shoots me in the head. I'm like, that's oh, probably dude. worse than what I ever <laughs> saw. Oh, I can't imagine that. Okay, look, this. I'm going to read this thing here. Uh, the description right here. It says, uh, Living Legends is a large-scale paintball event featuring mm. contestable territories that must be defended or captured. Territories are marked with a unique conquest marker that dictate which team controls the zone. Okay, so you got to flip it to your color. The slapstick is a conquest marker constructed of a rotating slapstick pole and horizontal crossbar at the top. When a player hits or slaps one, one end of the crossbar, it spins around the pole, indicating that ter territory has been captured by the changing or uh, changing the visible color on top. Teams must maintain the color change for 15 minutes to successfully capture the territory. Good Lord. Like, no. Dude. <laughs> Would no. you go up there right now? Okay. Anyone watching this right now, anyone watching the video of this podcast, I want to hear in the comments if you would do this. <laughs> I Holy can't. crap, no. dude. I'm cringing right now. This is I the other bad. one. Watch this one too. <laughs> Look at this at the top of the hill. Look, look at all these balls just flying, bro. Paintballs everywhere. Thousands. <laughs> Laps and run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is like a swarm of bees is what it looks like. Oh. Well, the crazy part, too, is it's on top of a hill. So Perfect it's uh, hard to get to. That's crazy. But anyway. Oh, shit. I, I can't have that. I really can't have that. <laughs> uh, it'd be fun, though. I mean, yeah, it would be, you, be amazing. But... You would have the uh, the biggest welts of the whole on the whole team if you were that guy that had to run up there. Barry. Hold on. Someone's crying at my door. Uh oh. Oh, you I'm got a your little cat. Yeah, it's actually I made an Instagram <laughs> account for him a little actually. Okay. And uh, I guess you say it's our newest member, but I did it as a joke mainly. But it's uh, Bondo underscore Tigger, like T I G G E R, yes. like um, you know, Tigger from uh, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. It's, that's actually awesome because actually a lot of people love cats. I'm like, I figure, I'm like, why not? You know, and. Yeah. Yeah, just crying. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people uh, start a separate Instagram for their pets. My uh, nephew, he got a uh, purebred uh, Doberman Pinscher dog. It's beautiful. She's beautiful. Um, yeah. And, you know, he takes her out running and stuff all the time. And just a beautiful, uh, beautiful dog. And he started a Instagram just for her as well. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Man. It is pretty cool to see those Instagrams, man. The uh, the dogs and cats one, where they, uh, where they do the the funniest stuff. Cats, dude, they do the weirdest <laughs> things sometimes. Like they get freaked yeah. out about the weirdest stuff. You know those videos I've seen where um, they'll lay like a cucumber. They'll lay a cucumber next to the cat while it's eating, and it doesn't notice it. And then when it notices it, it jumps up. Does it think it's a snake <laughs> or something? I don't even know. I think it's so. crazy. I mean, I just grab a wire and I just like, uh, you know, play with it, and the cat just starts just eating it. And I'm like, I need that. <laughs> like my phone charger or something. I'm like, bro, I need that. Oh shit! Right. <laughs> so, what do you? Uh, what is your preferred weapon in your tournaments and stuff? What do you use? Um, what gun you use right now? I go. I I use I use two different guns. I have a uh, AP01 with a monk adapter uh light and nice. this is when i usually play like snake or uh center and do too i mean like it's really compact i'm like i i love it i mean i want to get an esg and like try to play like center with like a like an esg like a paintball type gun but I, I like this like you know this pistol then um i forgot what kind of rifle this is but it's kind of like a frankenstein rifle i mean different lower different upper and you know my stubby i got tracer i got an angle grip and like just it, overall like it's a great gun but i'm trying to give this gun to um russell and honestly i mean this is what i mean like, if i do like play like tower or dorito or something like that i could you know just go here and just go from the back back and call outs this gun it's, it's it's amazing and small and i could do like i can clear room so quick mm -hmm. and i mean this is mainly my preferred one but the tournaments mainly mainly my pistol for sure. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice looking one too. I like those stubby ones. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I love like the um, like the stocks you can adjust, but I'm like stubbies is just it's fixed. I mean, there's there's no change in it. It's just perfect for a, like, holding like a peaking point or something. Honestly. Which one did you get first, the uh, rifle or the um, APO one? My ri my rifle. Okay. I'm a big rifle fan, but I'm like. You know, if I want to get, like, be really close to the ground, I'm like, I have to get a pistol. Oh, yeah. And so, with SpeedQB, pistols, you know, it changed my gameplay a little bit. So, I'm kind of decent at both. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, the AP ones are great because uh, they're cheap, they're uh, reliable. And they're very... the way, And they're very efficient on gas because of um, the way the bolt is set up. So it's not like the, you know, like most gas blowbacks, uh, the whole top slide moves just like a real gun. And um, they made this one different where just that little tiny, you know, the bolt's a lot smaller, the way it functions in the back. It's uh, it's really gas efficient. So it's a great, and they're light. Oh, very. It's with this monk adapter. It's uh, one of the lighter ones. Okay. And so you don't feel nothing at all. Right. So you put your slap your tracer, slap your mags in. Perfect lightweight gun, honestly. I mean, mm -hmm. I love play capos and everything like that, but I'm like, I always like the Glock base type pistol, and I'm like, the like, AP01 hype was so big. And I'm like, oh, yeah. well, I want to try it out, and here it is. I mean, it's, it's perfect. I mean, I got a short stroke from Waldo. I got a snappy boy from Waldo Customs, and this gun shoots. Uh, like a dream everything's still stock but the internals is not um i want to get like some like you know cooler like uh external parts like i'm trying to get the uh the bolt like a lighter bolt but for now it's just stock but the internal is just it's a perfect gun yeah love this cheap but you could really like make it worth your money Oh, there's so many adapters for it too now. Like the uh, 3D printed, yeah. like you can customize this thing any way you want. Oh, big berry. And I'm like, 
Ooh, I might get that actually. Like three D printed, like I've seen so many adapters that are skeleton like skeletonized. I'm like, mm-hmm. I really want one of those. Yep. They're just amazing how they look. Now, did you hear the uh, when Bonda was talking about the um, Lancer Tactical coming out with the <laughs> with the new speed soft guns? Yes. Um. Like, is it like underneath like under three hundred dollars or something like that? Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that. I'm definitely getting that. I'm gonna try it out, and I'm excited actually. When I first saw that out, um, I'm like, no way, no way. Yeah. Well, I was really surprised when he said that because I didn't even know. Like, I don't keep up with all the manufacturers and what the new stuff is coming out because I usually just ask people on here because they usually know. So (laughs) when I asked him, he was like, Lancer Tactical. I said, what? Okay. I mean, we've had a bunch of them, you know, in the mystery boxes like M4s and stuff. Yeah. And um, we would do reviews on them and people would always hate on them, bro. They're like, oh, Lancer sucks. I'm like, not the ones we've gotten. All the ones we got, uh, they were the cheaper model, you know, like $90 M4. Okay. And we test them out. And then my boys would take them to the mill Sims. Now it wasn't their main gun. It was their backup, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> their main gun would break it, You know how it does. It just like whatever airsoft luck or something like uh, it works at yeah. home. And then you go to chrono it and it just doesn't work for some reason. So, um, it would be their backup gun. They use it all weekend. It was great. And then they'd leave it in their bag. Wouldn't do anything to it. And take it to the next event, and it would, you know, they'd give it to somebody uh, as a loaner, and it still worked. Like it was, um, but you know, I, I've seen a lot of things online where people had issues with some of the Lancer Tacticals before, but we just yeah. never had those. We never had those experiences. Never used a Lancer Tactical gun, but like, I mean, I always hear like how like all oh, their crap, and I'm like, I can't knock it until I try it just yet. Mm-hmm. But since I heard like Air Tag, I'm like. Whoa. Yeah. Like, I know some air tag has some good parts. And I'm like, they said it's like amazing for speed QB. I'm like, really? It got my attention. I'm like, said speed QB. Gotta try it. <laughs> <laughs> for real, <laughs> gotta, man. Gotta bring it to a practice and just see how it goes. Yep. Now what do you guys got coming up that you're uh that you're excited about? I know you got something in March, you can't say what it is, but what's the mm. what's the thing you're looking forward to the most uh for twenty twenty four? Um, new patches I'm making for me, um, for oh, the nice. team and everything. Yeah, new patches for those actually. Um, my patch guy, Mr. Uh, Mr. Graphics. I know Bono was talking about him earlier. He's like the one actually made these jerseys right here. Okay. Um, are you patches, drawing it out? Actually. Oh, I was actually drawing out. I'm just waiting for them uh to be done making and send them over here. Actually. Nice. Yeah, it's all over my Instagram too. I'm just like a big fan. Um of like graffiti and gotcha. since Houston's like known for like their graffiti and everything I'm like okay since I'm like I'm a little bit of a graffiti artist I'm not I don't do none of this illegally but I like I love to draw and everything so I'm like okay I want to see what I could do with two things I love to do graffiti and um and bondo I put two 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 and two together I'm like amazing so I'm and, looking at one on your Instagram right now it's the uh well, that one's already done. That one, pa- that patch is already done. So I don't know if that's it. Yeah. But it's it uh, in quotations, and yeah, it's purple. Uh, yeah. Dripping. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, paint running like, down. Yeah, like that's one thing I know about like spray paint. I guess when you spray paint like walls and stuff like that, it starts like the drip, and so like yeah. it's a natural effect, and just for some reason it looks amazing with. You know, I have the original design actually on me. Yeah. If you want to see it. Um, yeah, it's that one actually. It's like people call it like the teardrop uh, on the sides, uh-huh. and so just for some reason, like all of that together, it looks amazing. Actually, it's two designs but put in one. Actually, I'm gonna yeah, show you right good, now. Man. Actually, so it's actually so it's this one right here. I'm uh-huh. not sure if you see it or not. Yeah, let me see. Okay, so it's this one right here. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, with the stitches, whatever, in the middle. Then the color one is right here, but in the B, it says uh, Houston. It, I, I, it was going to be just a Houston patch, but I'm like, well, everyone in the, uh, everyone in the group chat and all the people I'm friends with are like, I want that patch. I'm like, yeah. 
well, I guess it won't just be for Houston. I guess like everyone should get it, you know? And so I'm like, right. you know what? I'm going to digitalize it. I talked to um, one of my aunts. She's a big artist too. And so she got me into graffiti a little bit, into mainly just art. And she does a lot of like digital art. And so she helped me get it digitalized. And I sent it to um, Mr. Graphics. And after that, just the patch. I'm excited for these patches to come out, actually. Yeah, dude. Me too. That's cool. Very. Looks good. Then after that, then March, I mean, I can't wait for March. Then I'm getting uh, a whole new speed, cube, uh, speed soft belt, and that's about it. Okay. What do you run now? Uh, I run, uh, I forgot what kind of belt I run, but I have, actually it's right here. I have a speed soft like, thing from one of my nice. boys. And then just some uh, Molly pouch that I kind of just ghettoize a little bit to keep my mags in place so they won't mm-hmm. come out. Some zip ties, but it, it's amazing. Like, I want to just get a speed soft belt because it's Velcro and adjusts more easily, honestly. Right. But I run EPM ones. Oh, nice. And then one BAMF mag. BAMF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. When you first it's started playing, did you uh, did you play without a belt? Yeah, I used just like a chest uh, chest plate because like oh, okay. it hurt so much for me. And I'm like I can't do it. So I had to get I had to be a pussy and wear chest plate, you know, foam uh, <laughs> plates in the back, foam plates in the front. I'm like I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of getting shot. Very. Everyone was like, "Call your hits." I'm like, I can't feel them. <laughs> oh right. That's what I was talking about earlier, yeah. Yeah, but mainly run a belt and beanie, headband, and a mask. That's really it. But when I use my um, that's that's without my AP on one. I have a tank set up with the, I have a like a speed soft um bag, uh, put on, then hook that up to my uh gun. I'm trying to get like uh, because I know the speed soft has like a little thing you can put on your belt, and it's a molly rigged. And so it could get like a twenty some ounce uh, tank you can put on your back, and I'm like, I need one of those. She's like, I don't really like the backpacks that much. I mean, it's good for protection, but like, I'm like, it's not that good for like speed or trying to be close to the ground, honestly. Yeah. She can't do it. <laughs> and then I run a JT Proflex oh, that's with cool. the lick, yeah, you know, with the licked lens. I just got this actually. I ordered it. Because I saw one of my friends have it at Slasher Airsoft. And Bondo actually inspired me to get a JT. Then I put my little design of, like, the X's on the, on the bottom. Yeah. It's, it's actually awesome. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, it looks good. So you said you started out in vans. One of the questions uh, I asked people is, uh, you know, for Speedsoft, what shoes do you wear to play? Like, what are your favorite shoes to wear to run around the field and uh, do your tournaments and stuff in? Vans. Okay. Actually, I never quit using Vans because I'm a big skateboarder. I'm like, Vans, I always grew up with. Gotcha. But if it's like outdoor stuff, I wear like cleats, but yeah. Vans mainly. Okay. So, yeah, I talked to I mean, a dude that uh, switched to um, wrestling shoes. He started wearing wrestling shoes. Because they're so grippy. Oh, really? Yeah. Gotta and you know they go, they go up your ankle, right? They give you ankle support, and uh, they're super light. They're super light. I wrestled in high school, so when he said that, I was like, "Oh, okay, I could see that." Because they're really light, but the mm. bottom is really soft rubber. Like if you wore them outside somewhere, you know, on on regular concrete, like sidewalks, and you know, walking around, they w- the bottom will wear out pretty quick. But yeah. if you're using it indoor, like indoor fields that are like smooth concrete or whatever, um, they're super grippy, man. Uh, you can Ooh, you can I... climb halfway up a wall in those things for real. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta try those because like always love grippy shoes. That's why I use Vans. It's very like grip when it comes to like indoors. I'm like, if wrestling shoes are amazing. I'm like, I'll try some. Yeah, I mean, I'm always willing to try new gear. See if I like it or not. I mean, I've always been a person with like you know, um, chest rigs. But I'm like, I see people with belts. I see Bondo with belts. I'm like, what's so good about them? 
and uh, ever since I like tried it, I could move my whole like chest and everything. Just perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. When you're running and diving, uh, it, you gotta have, you you can't have a bunch of stuff on your chest, especially down mm -hmm. by your diaphragm. Um, yeah. <laughs> that stuff, you know, digs into you. It, it's not fun. It hurts. Then plus, uh -huh. like you, you ruin your mags. Your patches fall off. And I'm like, yep. yeah, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I had a I patch know. come off one time and I lost it. I'm like, shit, where did it go? Someone <laughs> took it. I'm like, come on. Oh. <laughs> I, just, I can't do it. Now, if you had a, so you play speed soft. If, um, if you had your choice with, uh, any team you could play against, who would you want to play against? Um, murder, murder ink. I okay. mean, I, I see all their videos all the time. I'm like, you know what? I would love to play against them because I know I'm friends with Bacon over there, actually. And I always see his videos and see always see their tournaments. I'm like, I want to try. I want to see what like what it's like to play against them in person, you know, as like a friendly tournament, you know, yeah. or not a tournament, just a friendly game. And everyone's like, oh, they're really good. I'm like, really? I'm like, I want to. I want to see that or Slaughter Project. I seen actually one of their tournaments in Bondo when they were in uh, HTK, and I think it was in Indiana, like last month I believe, or this month maybe. But I mean Slaughter Project, they're just they they absolutely murder on the field. It's mm -hmm. crazy what they do. Saw them play against Marshmallow Hunters, Bondo. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> gotta teach some, gotta teach me some of that stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. Crazy. Yeah, I had uh I've had one person on here from Slaughter and that's uh Cujo. Oh yeah, had, Cujo. Oh yeah, I had Cujo on last year and um I need to have him on again cuz it's been a, it's been a while. And oh, yeah. he's done a lot of tournaments since then. Man, I don't know what they're drinking before. You know, a tournament, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's pre-workout or something, but hey. It's pre-workout. Pre yeah, man snorting crack I mean, like, come on <laughs> so they gotta be doing stuff they're they're killing on that field jacked up right it's it's crazy because uh the first game of hdk like the first round it was slaughter against someone and they just murdered within like i don't want to like over exaggerate but like three minutes not even a minute but they just killed everyone with them just no time i'm like are you kidding <laughs> right that's just crazy I can't believe that. I'm like, wow. Well, when if you guys ever play against uh, Murder or Slaughter, I'll have to have uh, both y'all team, you know, like mm. a couple people from each team, have both yeah. you guys on at the same time and uh, to talk about the game. So that'd be oh, pretty cool. Man. Do an after action report. <laughs> I would love <laughs> to do that. Cause like always been a big fan of slaughter and like their patches stuff like that and then their team in general is just it's crazy the hype is just amazing everyone talks about slaughter from like all my friends are like oh do you know the slaughter project i'm like yeah it just their team is just wild awesome I can't imagine that dude it's been uh it's been great talking with you man um of course I'm looking forward to uh having you guys on again after your march uh, event and um, is there uh, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before we uh, wrap um, it up? My manager, uh, his Instagram is like L LNA Traffic Cone. His name is JJ. Awesome, awesome friend. I mean, he taught me the ways of how to play speed QB. Him and the whole Bondo Houston. Shout out to Bondo actually, because like without uh, without you or without him, like he took me underneath his wing. I mean, love to be here. I mean, without all, like, you know, the beef that's going on with so many teams, I mean, you know, Bono's like, hey, man, don't worry about it, you know. Keep what you're doing. You do, you're doing, like, amazing job. So, Bondo, JJ, the whole team is just amazing people. Awesome, man. And then where can people find all your stuff? Um, I have Instagram. It's the, the Killing Airsoft. And I got a YouTube that's in my bio. And TikTok, too. It's all in my bio. But... Other than that, I mean, oh, you can also find my cat, <laughs> Bondo uh, underscore Tigger, T-I-G-G-E-R. And I mainly, I run that uh, account for him because he has paws. He can't do nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs>
That's awesome. I'll have all these links in the uh, description of the video. Appreciate you, man. Right, Thanks man. for being on. Of course.